I'm back, it's 2020 and I have started my MSK placement. So today I'm going to talk to you about what to expect on an MSK placement and how I think it's best to prepare for one and some of the things that you might want to be ready for in your first week. So let's roll the video. So, you start your MSK placement. I thought maybe I should look at this um, from a point of view of year one, two, and three. I'm doing my third year MSK placement. It's my second MSK placement. So that does change things slightly. The expectation, obviously, in your third year on an MSK placement is that you kind of want to be working close to being band five ready. It's certainly one of my goals. I think it makes sense. If you're in year two and it's your first MSK placement, then obviously the expectation is going to be really quite different and there's really nothing to worry about. And, and it, to be fair, after my first day today, the team, my educator, um, I've got two but I met the first one today, really, really supportive. There's no pressure at all. Um, they recognise that I'm someone who might go a bit OTT on preparation and reading outside in the evenings and they told me just to kind of pace myself, which I need to be told that sometimes. But anyway, so let's go through really what you want to be doing. Obviously contacting the placement nice in advance, getting some information, find out what would they recommend. The demographics of their patients will differ depending on where you're going in the country. And only, know, only, only they'll know that. So they're best suited to, to let you know. So that might mean that they know you're going to see an awful lot of low back pain. It might mean that you're going to see an older population or it might mean that you're going to see a more deprived population. And so that's really important. So talk to your educator in advance, find out from them what they think you should prepare. So let me go through kind of things I think and I'm going to keep this super simple and this really is for year one, two and three, I think. Um, now, I'm gonna caveat all of this with, I'm not the best MSK student in the world. I find MSK quite difficult, it's quite pressured. You don't get a lot of time to think because you've got patient after patient after patient in theory. And I'm a more reflective learner. I take a bit more time, but needless to say, I'm gonna just gonna go through what's working for me and what's worked for me. So, first of all, it's the basics. You are a very, very new physiotherapy um, student, whether you're in the first, second or third year. You've got to remember that this profession is a forever learning profession. So yeah, you might be a third year, but there is no expectation that you're going to know it all. So all you really want to do is make sure that your basics are absolutely really kind of solid because then you'll be more confident. So if you can know what your subjective history is going to entail, you know that you can safely clear red flags and special questions relating to lower back um, and, and general red flag questions to clear, be sitting so your educator can see that you're safe, you're onto a winner. Your objective assessments, um, so I'm gonna be starting to look at making sure I'm honing those this week. That's all about I would say take each joint, know what kind of questions you're asking for. So if it's knee pain, you know you're looking for any locking or giving way. It's those sorts of things. Take each joint, write down some crib sheets or some flashcards. So I would say bring some flashcards with you on placements. Um, they'll help you kind of just get to grips with what you need to know for each joint. So keep it really simple. Just know the basics. Take some you know, familiar common conditions um, and that might be anterior knee pain or femoral, femoral joint pain it might be some things around the hip it might be so your lower back pain what might differentiate that's something you'll be more worried about quarter equina those sorts of things um, and also your so your lower limb and your shoulder think of your shoulder problems um, and just kind of get to grips with your basics so think head and go down and just make sure you know your joints. Um, and that's not to say you're learning all your muscle origins, insertions, roots and etc. That's that's not actually 
from my point of view, that's not a priority. So the next thing I thought I'd go through is just what textbooks have I bought with me. So I stay away on placement. I can focus on my placement for the five weeks. Um, I've got a, found a little cottage on Airbnb, um, so I'll be here for the five weeks going home at the weekends. So I bring with me what I think I might need. So first and foremost, you'll have, if you look, um, I'll put the link up here for the video I did on textbooks as a physiotherapy student, and all of these are from that video, but I've just taken out my MSK ones. So the, this one here, so this is the uh, musculoskeletal examination and assessment textbook. Really good, goes through really nicely on your subjective um, examination. I don't think you can see that, but that'll go through your subjective ass um, assessment. Um, and then it'll go through some of your key examinations based on, um, I think this splits it up quite nicely. So this goes through your, for your physical examination for the everything from the temporomandibular region, through cervical region, th cervical thoracic, thoracic, shoulder, elbow, wrist, lumbar, pelvis, hip, knee, foot and ankle. So it's pretty comprehensive there in terms of your examination assessment. Leading nicely on from that, <coughs> we have Principles of Musculoskeletal Treatment and Management. This is a much thinner book than, than this one here. So as you can imagine, there's, a, there's more in this one here. Your subjective history is so, so important. You should get majority of what you need when seeing a patient from your subjective. Your objective really probably is just that last bit of that funnel to give you an idea of what's going on. So that's a good book as well. Um, I'll put a link to it below to Amazon where you can buy all of these from. <clears throat> um, so those are those. So that's your kind of your general MSK assessment, which are really, really good. Um, I bought with me an anatomy book, dropped everything on the floor, so I bought this one with me. So in the video that I did on, on my books, you'll notice that I got a realisation that one's anatomy and physiology and one's just anatomy. So I quite liked a bit of physiology as well, so tutorials are really good for that. Um, so I've just, I have got some other things. Now in MSK, one of the things that I think differentiates us as physios massively is our ability to look at patients, not just MSK, but also from any other conditions um, that they might have and comorbidities. And one of the other things, I bought this book with me here. So this is this, the physical management for neurological conditions. It just covers some of your neuro stuff and which you will be looking at potentially if you've got any neuropathic patients um, or you've got any, um, if you're looking at your neuro uh, assessments when you're looking at maybe lower back pain things like that so that's just quite good a bit more detail for that if you're in the third year and second year well first year as well but particularly second and third year you want to be looking at integrating some evidence into your treatment plans so as I raved about in my last that book there it is absolutely brilliant the camera seems to be focusing a little better on this one here so we take standard deviation standard deviation and I don't know if you can see there but look how simple that is um, I'm assuming I'm allowed to show books on here so if I take something else I mean it goes er it goes to everything here I'm trying to sell something that's sort of um, correlation risk odds ratios what I like about this as well is it gives you an idea of how important it is so if I take um, mean for instance so we're looking at averages here it goes through how important it is it rates it so this has got five stars for important so it appears in and it tells you it appears in 70 percent of surveyed papers so it's important to have an understanding of how it's calculated how easy it is to understand it's got five thumbs up um, so it's saying there that um, it's one of the simplest statistical concepts to grasp um, to be fair most of you are probably thinking well, I did that in my GCSEs which is fine um, so you've got all sorts of p-values there so again really important concept p-values are given in more than two-thirds of papers um, three stars it says here not easy but worth persevering as it's used so frequently it's not essential to know how the p-value is derived just to be able to interpret the results so again you can see that's on p-values there so really good if you're reading papers and you want to be able to kind of quickly at a glance understand some of the statistics which will help you obviously that's really key um so what else we got um 
flashcards. I know I'd said about not knowing, you know, origins insertions, but you, you kind of need to know where they're going. Um, and I just bring those with me because they're quick and easy. That. Make sure you got it. That's the old one. There's, I think there's a, a new, maybe even a newer version of that. So physically. Yeah, and it's got all your common musculoskeletal tests. So if you're looking at shoulder tests, those so-called special tests, um, just a tip on there, active range of movement, passive range of movement, just stick to that to start with. Okay, what else do I bring with me? Mention flashcards, really useful. A diary, make sure you've got a diary so you know what you're doing on placement. Um, so for instance, I use, I love these. These are great, these are um, moleskin. I think I'll put a link below. They're really good. They're not the cheapest, but they're just really nicely laid out with your days read down one side and then a big whole page for notes um, so you can write out stuff. Um, so that's really, really useful that. There's enough room in there um, and a bit there that sticks together. So that, that, that's pretty good. Um, what else have I got? Just a notepad. Something cheap and doesn't really matter, but just something. So today, for instance, I've got just from today, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve pages of notes just from one day, my first day. Um, so that's really actually vital. It also, if you pull that out in front of your educator, they know that you're interested and you you want to kind of know what's going on. A um, couple of other things. I find this really useful. This is just a cheap folder with fitted plastic poly wallets. I call them poly wallets, plastic sleeves. I find this really useful because when I get given forms, so for instance, that's the assessment form I've been given, I can put it straight in there and I can just go to it, right, okay, what's the form I'm using? Just gives me in the evening something I can use. Obviously remember, don't take anything confidential with any patient information at all home really really key um, I've got this as well now I've not done this before but I've mentioned in one of my other videos I think it's about procrastination is writing to-do lists I have found these when I was looking and I love a bit stationary it's a to-do list pad it's got a magnet on the back so you can stick it to the fridge but I just thought actually this might be really useful for for me to do so I might take this to placement and when I know things I want to look up in the evening I can just write them in here quickly or just general to-do things so that might be quite useful as well. Um, I think that is everything. Obviously, there is one thing I forgot to bring with me this time. It's really important, and that is your university workbooks and notes. Obviously, a lot of it's online now, but we have, um, at the University of Plymouth, we have great workbooks for each module and the MSK modules, and they are absolutely brilliant. I can't believe I forgot those, but um, it's, it's fine. I've, I think I'm okay, but do bring those along with you your lectures, things like that. You've probably got lecture slides and PowerPoint presentations on certain pathologies. You can revisit those, try and do that a little bit beforehand. Don't overload yourself. Um, I've learned the hard way and I now know that actually when you start placement, it's all just a big boom, and you've got to be ready for just that. So rather going, rather than trying to preempt everything prior to placement, just relax and enjoy the first day, get to know your surroundings, and then in the first week you can start prioritising what things you need to go back over, what things have you maybe you forgotten a bit about and you need to brush up on, but we will come back to you. Um, so, I think that's everything. Enjoy it. Grades are not the be-all and end-all. I guarantee you that if you try and get the most out of the placement for the placement's sake, i.e. a really good experience, and you work hard and you show enthusiasm, take feedback, listen to feedback, ask questions, your grades will just come. You'll get a better grade from being like that than you will trying to hit certain criteria in the work, in your in your grades, grading criteria, whatever it is, the curriculum. Um, it'll, you'll lose focus on what you're really there for. So um, again, I've learned that the hard way. I think that's everything. So I'm gonna leave this video. It's great to be back. I haven't done one for ages. I'm not gonna be doing loads because they take up way too much time on placement. So um, I'm going to leave this one at that. I hope you're all enjoying 2020. I hope everyone's doing lots of physical activity. If you're on placement, get out and do, you know, go for a walk, go for a run, go to the gym, go for a bike ride, whatever it is. Physical activity will increase your energy levels whilst on placement. Um, and generally, if you're a physio student, you should know by now how good that is for you. So without further ado, I'm going to enjoy the rest of my placement. I might, when I see fit and I see something need be, I might do another one of these for you guys. 
But other than that, I shall speak to you soon.